and gentlemen, this is the Resellers Locker Room coming at you live at the moment, but in recorded version for you. First up, introducing first, Mr. Pop Pop, Jane Soda City Flips in the house, followed by the newly migrated to Alaska, Alex, the Beard King Picker. And our special guest here in the locker room this evening, call him Corey. He thinks his tractor is sexy. From Graham's and Pops Vintage, please welcome Corey in the house. How we doing, gentlemen? Doing good. good, good. Doing good in my Appreciate English. the shout out for the tractor. I got to say, though, sexy. Ben, you missed the opportunity to call Alex Gandalf the Brown. Oh, yeah, I did. Didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, you know, he had a hard time moving to Alaska, and I thought I'd cut him a break. Yeah. You know what I mean? But welcome yeah. into the Reseller Locker Room, everybody. This is episode number 23. My name is Ben, the Rocky Top Picker. And tonight we have special guest, as I said in the opening, Corey from Grams and Pops Vintage in the house. And we wanted him to come on to the locker room and share all of his experiences in one putting on a reseller meetup, which he did recently. So we want to hear the highlights of the process leading up to that. Then the actual event, detail it out for us, Corey, and how you how things went, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. We'll turn it over to you there, Biggin. Sure. Thanks, Ben. Uh, oh, geez, I get the big screen here. Yeah, okay. yeah ben, ben does this. <laughs> ben stops First, that. the, Makes the event nervous. itself, I, I guess planning the event itself was – I can't take all the credit for that. We had, we had Lori and happy or Lori, happy picker and Kyle grumpy picker. We had Alicia ink picker and myself and Teresa, and it took all of us. It was a lot of planning ahead of time. We it took about four months to put it together. Um, so. Leading up to the event, we got sponsors and those sponsors without the sponsors, we wouldn't have been able to do it. I think you guys are doing an event right now. Those sponsors are super important. Okay. So, we would have definitely, we'd have lost a lot of money doing it without the sponsors, put it that way. Right. We actually ended up at the end of it. We ended up breaking even on the event, which I know that's not the highlight of the event here, but that was a highlight for us. We didn't lose money. So that was well, sure. fantastic. Yep. Absolutely. Um, I think going into the event, we we had been to several other events, all of us had, and we kind of took the the things we liked and the things we disliked and, and we built what we felt was going to be kind of a good combination of the best of the best. And it, and it turned out really well. It didn't go off without a hitch, but, but it went really well. We got a thrifting bus. One of the things everybody talked about amongst us was going to the other events. The one thing we didn't like is a lot of the people you went there to see, as soon as you got there, it seemed like they hopped in an Uber together and they were gone. You didn't get to see them. Yeah. You didn't get to spend much time with them because they were often, in their own little vehicles, doing their own little things. So we shoved everybody into a party bus and, and we went thrifting together. Like there was nobody we didn't get to sit down with. Like nobody at all. Yeah, that's um, a cool idea. As a as a group, the, the 40, 43 or 44 of us that were there, we went to, to dinners that night when everything was done. They were unplanned, but we all kind of booked a big reservation for 40 some people. And we went to dinners together that night. Well, two nights we did that. So How again, can... there was nobody split off. Like everybody was together. How did 40 people decide where to eat? Me and my wife, we just argue for like two hours <laughs> to try to go out to eat. So how did 40 people decide on one place to eat? I think about six or seven of us got together and started calling around to see who would even take that many people. Yeah. That's what I was Thursday say. and I think... Friday up to the restaurants to to decide for you yeah the restaurants are where we could get into determined a lot of it but they were all good food the second the saturday night one was a little expensive but the food was great the service was great and everybody just kind of they they fed themselves i mean everybody picked up their own check but we were together in one big restaurant we all pulled tables together and it was again you got a chance to sit with new people and talk with new people so if networking is what you're really looking for in the events, and if you're going to events, that is what you should be looking for. Yeah. There was no shortage of that at all here. Like it it 
not only the parts that we intended to be networking parts, but the parts we we didn't plan at all ended up being good networking parts. Um, and then I I think the speaker part, the the breakout on on Saturday, we had one to four, so about a four hour breakout where we had resell rabbit come in and speak. We had Emily crazy and flip crazy flip and mom come in to speak. We had uh, Ivan from Dibdit was representing, well, he's from district representing Dibdit by Trashed Cash. Mm -hmm. And then we had uh, Vendu, Deanna from Vendu. They all came in and talked about their specialties. And and then we just opened it up to a crowd. It was very informal. We told them all not to plan anything. We weren't given speeches. There was no sales pitch. It was just come in and tell us about it and then let us, let us grill you for... 20 minutes and just ask questions. And and that's now, what we kind of did. With with District and Ivan, did anyone ask or did he mention the app for Android coming out? Because yeah, every time I up. ask him in <laughs> chat, he ignores me. It came <laughs> up. I, we got the standard. It's in the works. It, it did uh, come up, okay. though. I mean, he was having people actually open open it up in, on their phones in the audience to show them different features. And of course only half the audience could do it. So <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, it's, I it's in the works. He I says him in somebody's when they're doing live shows and he's in there, I'll ask mm -hmm. him and he never answers me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the answer. It's in the works. So I don't know if that's an eBay it's in the works or, if, right. or if that's really something that's in the works, I guess time will tell on that. For sure. So, but over overall, I think the event went as smooth as we could hope it went. There was a few hiccups. The bus driver parked about a block and a half away because the bus was too big for the hotel and wanted us to to round up 40 some people to walk to them. We ended up getting him to pull around and park right in front of the hotel on the street. So that one it straightened itself out within 10 minutes. And then one of the places that we we were paying for dinner at the spaghetti works place. We walked in and with with everybody from the event, they were like, "We don't know what you're talking about. You don't have a booking." Oh, <laughs> so <wow. laughs> it it did take them about ten minutes to figure it out. They found our booking, and and they put us in a room, which which they put other people in with us, just a, a small group of people. But then they they didn't charge us for the venue fee. They didn't charge us the four hundred dollars for the private room that they were going to. So we ended up saving money on it. Yeah, and that's cool. That small group of people didn't bother us a bit. So it ended up being it, it ended up being better for us in the long run. Cause I mean we we broke even right at the end and that four hundred dollars made all the difference. Yeah. Heck yeah. That's dude. cool. So it looked to me just by watching all the content that I've seen come out since that event ended, it looked like the mattress factory seemed to be everybody's favorite restaurant. It is a cool restaurant. My my oldest daughter got married there. In the, the upstairs is a venue they rent out. Nice. And they had their wedding reception there, and they catered and everything. I we know, have the same, we have the same look. question, Ben. Right? Mattress factory. <laughs> yes. Yes, a, Alex. I was going to say mattress, mattress factory. factory? Restaurant. It it used to be an old mattress factory that they converted into a restaurant. So do you get like a side of bed bugs? Nope, nope, not there. It's too clean. An appetizer or you anything? Have to, you have to request it. <laughs> Dessert, chocolate dip, bed bugs. That, it Corey, is a, that it just, is a cool place. Corey, that just goes to show that these guys don't watch you and your friends' content. It, neither does anybody else, so that's not shocking. <laughs> just me. Just me. <laughs> I watched. I saw the party bus reels, so I would watch them. We yeah, still have. Cool. It, it was really cool because we still have content coming out. There weren't many i mean there was like two big creators there it, it was resale rabbit and crazy flipping mom are the two biggest creators there i mean there was no big celebrity creators there at all really but the content just keeps coming i mean people are releasing content i know of two or three videos that are still waiting to come out towards the end of the week here yeah content just keeps rolling out from from everybody that was there which is really cool yeah i still got content to put out from the trash to cash thing and that was yep freaking month and a half ago i don't but remember that many lazy. people recording while we were at this thing i guess i i kind of got absorbed into making sure everybody was where they had yeah. to be and making sure everybody was having fun i don't think i picked up a camera the whole time i was there 
we had my youngest with me recording everything for us and she did a really good job she recorded interviews smart. of everybody yeah I yeah actually, i like I, those I employing i like those interviews those were crew. funny i have a question yeah. and you need to settle who's better or who do you like more grams or pops <laughs> me <laughs> yeah you know, I, I, that's like the right, I mean, that's the right help. answer. Graham's is mean as hell. <laughs> I definitely. Like, I watched that whole series on Instagram. So. Yeah, I got the short end of that one. But no, Hannah Hannah had the camera. And she just took off and did her thing. And we never asked her to do interviews. Matter of fact, we never thought of it. But now that she did it, I think we would do that at every event. Like that was good feedback, if nothing else. It's, and it was yeah, entertaining it content. It re- yep. I loved it, and I thought it reminded me of my video where I was going around asking all these big YouTubers what their favorite yep. Soda City Flips video was, and it just put them <laughs> on the spot. Put them on the spot. And, so, yeah, that was hel- hilarious in my opinion. And then when I saw her interviewing, and it just reminded me kind of what I was doing. I was like, these people are being put on the spot. It makes for funnier content because it was good. Yep. you don't know what they're going to say. You know, They don't have yep. time to prepare. And she got a lot of good video for her own, for her TikTok too, because she runs the Talks with Grams and Pops TikTok channel. Like that's oh, hers. Cool. That's not ours. So she got a ton of good content for that too. That's awesome. Shane, I have the answer. My favorite Soda City Flips is the new one up until you actually got to the event. Everything <laughs> before the freaking event is absolutely hilarious. Yes. <laughs> so go watch it and just fast forward to the karaoke in the car. Yes, it's golden. <laughs> yeah, that is a after good one. I'm gonna have to off, re-release that every after year. After that, it, it went off the rails. You know what I'm saying, Shane? Yeah. Just keep yeah, it to the yeah. car. <laughs> I appreciate the feedback, gentlemen. <laughs> that was uh, and so that video. Like, I knew I wanted to make a video of my experience down there, but I didn't want it to be typical. Like, oh, I went to this event, and mm-hmm. you know, here's what happened. I wanted it to just be chaotic and fun and i think i accomplished that i didn't record anything useful <laughs> so <laughs> it was just all for me <laughs> that was a good video we watched it twice so it, oh, i mean dang. i don't watch very many videos twice well i appreciate Corey, it if you were to go back if you were to go back and had to redo the whole event experience that you were a, a part of building what would you do differently this time? Leave Grams at home? No, God, no. She helped a ton. <laughs> I think I would. I think I would almost split off one person on the team just to focus purely on getting sponsors and speakers lined up. Like, and and I would change the type of speakers we had too. I think sponsors was vital. Like, I can't stress that enough. We would spend a lot more time looking at sponsors. And figuring out how to get them involved in the event, not just donating. But the the speakers, I would love to grab somebody that's just a a clothing guy and a book guy and a shoe guy and bring them in and just grill them about that part of, like, bring in one book guy and just say, okay, tell us about how you sell and about selling books. And then just let the audience grill them on books. Like, I think the audience would get way more out of that than almost any other kind of speaker. Yeah. So I'd love You're to do that. Right. Yeah. Don't point at me, Shane. You don't want me speaking in front of people. <laughs> You're already on the books for next year, Alex. We've All got right. you down. I'll be there. We will we will comp one snack time. We'll bring cookies. Oh well I Alex, you know you'll be speaking at the 127. And yeah, Corey, I'll have plenty of GoPro footage. So That's you'll good. be able to witness his speaker speakership on the mic. <laughs> oh, he'll do he'll do fine once you're up there it's not bad it's just it's nerve-wracking until they hand you the mic i am not a public yeah. speaker and i pulled I it off i do not do public speaking me neither i'm the guy like matter of fact i don't do public video. you don't want people to, or the teacher to call on you i was the guy hiding in the back so they didn't call there's me. a reason why i got into reselling so it's, i could not leave my house and deal with people yep it's, i'm it's the middle funny. of the crowd guy that is the exact i try to blend reason in. why i resell so i don't have to work with people <laughs> Now look it's, what I'm doing. It's funny though because I can do Here's I, can my do friend. YouTube, I can do YouTube with no problem. I can do these these shows with you guys no problem. Karaoke, 
in front of anybody, but you get me standing in front of a crowd talking and I'm just nervous as hell. I don't well, understand why. Guys, I'm right at home in a microphone in front of a crowd. I've done it for a living for many years. I wouldn't have guessed that. Well, it shows. Yeah. It doesn't shows. bother me a bit, man. It doesn't you, bother me a bit. I wouldn't think well, we actually, in my background I would get nervous talking, but I always had like an instrument, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. We had one per we well, we had more than one person. We had several people actually talk in their videos and at the event about how extremely introverted they were and how much they enjoyed the event because it pulled them out and made them talk to other resellers. A lot of people told us how much they learned and the fact that they got to go talk to pe people that had never been to events before. And, well, and I guess that was a cool thing about this event. It was right in the middle of the U.S. I understand it was Omaha and people had, some people had some issue with that, but it was right in the middle of the U S and it was 56 degrees all weekend. Yeah, like I was it couldn't say, have been better. How lucky Corey, did you all get to have the weather that you had? It was a flip of a, it was 50, 50, the weekend, everybody went home. It snowed. <laughs> wow. So well, it was one, really a 50, 50. One thing I really thought was cool that you guys did, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I think this was Lori and Kyle, but the bingo cards that you guys made, yep. and it kind of forced everyone to mingle with each other. I thought that was Yeah, they didn't even get through check-in. They had to go find people that... The, the bingo card basically said stuff like, find somebody that made a $100 sale on eBay in the last week, and different things like that, or find somebody that's dropped a video on YouTube in the last week. So you had to talk to people. So they didn't even make it through check-in and they had that bingo card and it was for a drawing. So people were talking back and forth, trying to fill out their bingo cards, like right in the lobby during check-in. So those cool. were, yeah, that was a big hit. We really liked I that. Thought that was, that was super cool. Like little icebreaker for everybody to kind of yep. get to chatting and get to know each other. I thought that was a really cool idea. Yeah, they did a good job on that. That was, I think they said that was something similar to something they saw at Boss Reseller or, or one of the other events. But that's that's kind of what I mean when we were pulling all the best stuff from other events. Like we didn't yeah. invent anything. Matter of fact, I think Alicia talked about doing a party bus, Ink Picker did, at like two events ago when we were in Trash to Cash event in Vegas. She said yeah. it'd be really cool if we could all just get together on one bus, like a party bus, and just drift together. And we kind of just held on to that and used it. So nothing we did was new. We we're just kind of took the good parts. We're going to do that in Tennessee, but everyone's just going to be in the back of a pickup truck, all piled in there. Let's <laughs> get a flatbed trailer and a tractor. Or, or we're cramming everybody into our little kiddie pool full of watermelon jello. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Now, Alex Shane, That's I've got after I, dark. If, you, if the if the two of you guys at 127 need an icebreaker with the folks that are coming to this event, I'm going to propose that we'll station two of you guys outside the entry door with two big buckets and you hand everybody a cold bottle of ice water. That way you got to introduce yourself and they'll introduce themselves and you give them a cold water. Oh, I'm not I'm not shy. I don't need to I'll, I'll talk to anybody. Yeah, it's I'll it's not the, hard. I'll be, in, I'll be in the corner singing That's Me in the Corner by R.E.M. <laughs> when you get stuck in that room, people are going to come up to you. Like, you don't yeah. you don't have to yeah. try. People will start coming up to you. That was the cool thing about it. And yeah. at, it was, it was kind of cool to see at this event, a couple of them we had been to, well, everyone we've been to, actually, towards the end, the last night was almost always kind of a party. Like, everybody was drunk. That's that's that one thing about me. I hate drunk people. Orlando. I can't take a drunk person. Like I, I'll go to the room. I'm done. So this event, I mean, people had drinks. The bar was open, but everybody was so engaged in talking and getting to know people and and making plans for the next mornings and stuff like that. Not one person at this event was drunk. That I mean, we never saw a single one. That's cool, which is great. Yeah. Well, same same can be said too about you know, the 127 meetup I went to last year. Yeah. No alcohol at this event period, just a lot of good home cooked food. Yep. And, um, that is, that's kind of, you know, this 127, I think is the meetup at 127 is different from a lot of the other reseller meetups is the fact that it's built around the event of the highway 127 sale. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not like when you're trying to create an event, okay, what, uh, what activities are we going to be able to take these folks and do, which there's nothing wrong with what you guys did. I think a party bus to go thrifting is awesome. Yeah. But it's kind of cool that that, that feature is already established and in place. Yep. And you're just Built building in. your, you're building your event around that. Yep. And so actually, if if I could figure out a way to swing it and make it happen, I would probably steal from your event anyway, because I love the idea of rather than take everybody to a restaurant or something like that. I love the idea of just throwing down a venue and having a barbecue or some kind of a banquet like you guys are doing. And like yeah. Caleb did last year and Chris, mm -hmm. like yeah. that part of it, I really like that. I think it would be way more cool than reserving spots at spaghetti works and having them forget you're coming <laughs> I'd have freaked out, man. yeah I would have freaked oh i was out. nervous <laughs> i'm like yes, okay i guess we're all gonna go to hell. sonic and order corn dogs i was flipping through emails <laughs> as fast as i could i was nervous drive the party bus through a drive through <laughs> do they have a waffle house up there where you all had the event they do yeah they have well, they have a Waffle House, and I think they have an IHOP, too. So, Well, there you go. You could have crashed either one out. of those and have been you, fine. You, you ain't fitting 40 people in a Waffle House. I you think you fit, can. You feel like 10 we did people assembly in a lined it. No, you can seat more than that in, in the Waffle House here. I mean, I'm sure they're all built standard the same. I ain't never seen an empty Waffle House, though, to fill up. No, they're always full. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe you can't fit 40. I We're taking the through. party bus to Bucky's, okay? Everybody Bucky's. get a brisket sandwich, get some Bucky, uh, little whatever those things are called. Beaver nuggets. Beaver nuggets. Beaver, beaver nugget, nuggets. True that. Just eat yeah, that we had to coordinate all, all the stops and how long we were going to be at each stop and when we were going to load and unload with that bus because those boys are paid by the hour. Oh, so yeah. you don't want a bunch of people hanging around chatting in line at a thrift store or Bucky's or anywhere like that. Like we didn't, we didn't waste any mileage on that bus. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Well, one other thing that was super cool. Um, I watched Steven Donna's video, uh, happy heart pickers yep. and the bins manager had stopped and talked to them and yeah. was like, Hey, do you want me to bring you guys out some fresh bins? And of course he's like, yeah, he's like, yep. <laughs> but I was like, man, that was really cool of her to do that. And we yeah. had a couple of the, the places we stopped talked to one or the other of the people that were there and said, man, I wish we would have done something for you guys or what can we do for you guys? Or can we do something next year? The funny thing is I called all three of those places and, and tried to rent out the building or get a coupon or just let them know we're coming. Can we do anything different or special? And they were all just, you know, they, they were shut down to it. They didn't, I don't think they believed we were actually going to bring that many people. That's what I was about to say. They so I don't think it was real to them until we actually rolled up. <laughs> we actually had one place tell us, don't come. Like, we don't want you here. Don't bring the bus. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> and it was that Amazon bin store. If you watch okay. Resale Rabbit's second video or first video, he, he went to an Amazon style bin store in his video that's right in Council Bluffs. That store actually told us don't bring people here we don't want you to come yeah I, so I we skipped that one yep, exactly <laughs> wow somebody should get fired over that that's yeah, i was talking to their regional manager so yeah they should i think they said that was their dollar day they'll make a lot more money just on their their normal people they're all crowded they have lines that day they didn't they didn't want any more people so they just told us it'd be better if we didn't corporate greed that's yep. crazy we offered to rent the place out for the day. Like, tell me what you make in a day. We'll rent the building. Wow. They said, nope. <laughs> they didn't go for that, huh? Well, but anyway. That's all right. Speaking of the 127 sale, down below in the ticker, yeah. scrolling across the bottom of your screen, tickets have been on sale for the 127 sale now for what, fellas? About two weeks now, I guess. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, and uh, you can go to eventbrite.com, pick those tickets up. They're $25 each. That includes the entry to the meetup. And we've got a schedule, I think, like from four to six is like a um, pre meet and greet mingle session, I believe, is from four to 6 p.m. And then we'll start with the actual meetup where we'll have the tremendous homemade smorgasbord meal. 
that Caleb's wife, Tanya, will be preparing. And, yeah, there's going to be good old homemade nanner pudding in there. And there's some more other menu items that Caleb will be announcing a little bit later. But uh, for 25 bucks, you get in and you get to spend an evening with your fellow resellers, a lot of them who are YouTube creators, one-on-one -on -one time, talking, getting to know one another over a good meal. Plus, we're going to be doing lots of giveaways. We're also going to be doing a live auction, which uh, Lucky7 will be our auctioneer. You need to check out his uh, YouTube channel, Lucky7 Auction. He will be our auctioneer. And we'll be auctioning off lots of items that are going to go to a charity. And the charity name slips my mind at this moment. But it's all going to go to charity. It's going to be a lot of fun. And what else we got going on after that, gentlemen? You eating gummies over there, Shane? Hot tamales. Hot tamales. Oh, no, they're, they're, they're hearts from Valentine's. I don't know oh. where my wife found these things. It's the hottest freaking cinnamon candy i've ever had in my life uh so, we're gonna have a cinnamon heart filled swimming pool at the after party <laughs> after party so, so ben that, that 25 bucks for a ticket man that doesn't even pay for the meal are you guys uh, doing are you guys gonna be going after sponsors or are you guys well just taking that one on the chin or speaking of that that's cheap. Sponsorships, I think we have like five. If, if I'm not mistaken, Caleb, Josh, if I get it wrong, you can put it in the comments down below. But I believe we have five sponsorship slots left, yep. of which you are one of, right, Corey? Aren't you a sponsor level or supporter level? Did I? There's there's sponsor oh, I did. I, well, I, yeah, I did sponsor with Caleb, I guess. Duh. So yep. that's a dumb yeah. question then, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty dumb. <laughs> that was not I'm intentional. Gonna, I'm going to yeah. cover it anyway. Nice, but nice, I had already plug. forgotten. Nice little oh, plug there, Corey. He wants a little plug, Ben. Just hey, you got any sponsors? I, think, I mean, you're gonna have to do. I don't sponsors. think my check's gonna clear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, Grams and Pops, thank you so much for being a sponsor of the Highway 127 Meetup, picking on the plateau. And uh, yeah, we have. I think there's five slots for sponsorship open. You can always be a supporter at a hundred dollars, even, uh, and that's unlimited amount. We'll take supporters at that level. There's various benefits at each level, and you know I don't know if we've got a website. Do they? Have, we got a website up where they can go look to see. Do y'all remember the benefits at the sponsor and the supporter levels? I do not remember. No, so Just put Ben's horrible. phone number up here. Okay, so I know. Are you a supporter? Because one of the things was being able to go on the Two Old Guys podcast, and we That's were gonna we were gonna we we're gonna match that and have them on as well. And you're here right now, Corey. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I know that's one that thing that, that's going Check on. Plus for reseller locker room podcast, it was. Yeah, so yeah. see, I don't, I don't even have to buy tickets because I, I think Caleb said two tickets come with it. So if we get yeah. the chance, if it does work out, we will. But I also did tell Caleb if we don't get to go, that that you guys can raffle those tickets off or give them away or do a do whatever okay. with them. Just turn them back over and try to get somebody that can actually come down to use them. But or, it, or yeah, Corey, if anybody we could ahead. have you we could have you back in the locker room and we'll just do a live with you and we'll auction them off live. There you go. Yeah, if anybody out there can sponsor these events, if if you've been to these events, you know how valuable they are. If you can sponsor or help, do it. Like yeah. these things are hard to put on and people don't put them on forever. There's been a couple that already cut out this year that aren't coming back. There's there's one that changed hands and I don't know what the what's going on with that one. It's hard to keep these things going. So if you can sponsor, if you have the ability to sponsor support, do it. I know you guys supported ours and you guys were supporter level on ours too. We appreciate that. It makes a big difference. Hey, we're happy to help. Absolutely. I wish yeah. wish I could have been there. I do if you're gonna do it next year, I will be there. We're talking about it. We are talking about it. We may move it back. A little bit so it falls towards the end of march that way we don't have the the coin flip of mother nature but yeah right we are talking about doing it again well next time we'll get you on before the event so you can promote it so next time we'll plan a lot further ahead so that we can breathe a little easier <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah now ben you mentioned the ticker earlier and i wanted to ask you did you realize there's podcasts out there that don't use that the ticker? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I see it a lot. I'm like, that why was, don't you the, utilize it? That, that was a shot at trash to cash. <laughs> Is yeah. that a stream yard thing? Yeah. <laughs> Fist punch. <laughs> Fist punch. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that was my shot at trash to cash uh, this week. I, I There's a lot that. of pods that don't do what we do. You know? It's hard being number one. <laughs> We don't we don't want to distract from the quality content we're dropping. So we leave that stuff off. We barely want our names up there. <laughs> Hashtag facts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Well anyway, this this highway one twenty seven, you know, you guys, the listening audience, you guys listening, watching, whatever, you're gonna be hearing a lot of it. It's because we are so excited about what's coming up. And um by the time August rolls around, I know Shane has been to his first reseller meetup event. He went down to Orlando for that. I went to last year's Highway 127. By the time we get to August, Alex will have been to a meetup there in Nashville. Yeah, Corey, you've definitely been to one, of course. I think but we've you done do, three now. Yeah, you do. Not only do you see the value, but you feel the value in actually going to one after it's over. Oh, absolutely. Oh, for sure. And for me, the biggest part that I get excited about is meeting all the other people and getting to know them and talking about shared experiences with this crazy business we call reselling. I think my biggest takeaway from going to an event like this is coming home and realize, well, it's not even coming home. It's realizing right there on the spot, talking to other people, how bad at reselling I still am. Oh like yeah. How incredibly horrible we are at this because yeah. people were showing us their stores and what they're doing and talking us through the, some of the different ways they do stuff. We, we are not even scratching the surface. Like we really do suck at this. It didn't yeah. motivate you to get better. It does. Like we got yeah. home and we we immediately went to work. Yeah, yeah. I just I really good for I that. really enjoyed meeting all my fans, like Dave and Carrie and Kevin. <laughs> Rod, all the all the people that said they've team. never seen one of your videos. Yeah, those yeah. guys, your yeah, fans, those guys. No, I I had <laughs> I had one one couple come up to me and introduce themselves, and they knew who I was. Um, and they thought you were Froggy Flips, didn't they? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> they uh they you, knew you, who i was and they watched you the kind of look like froggy flips with that half a and beard that was cool. he just needs to wear that beanie you know and he took like <laughs> i don't have any beanies in here <laughs> I, don't think. I sold a beanie recently and beanie got one baby. of the coolest feedbacks i ever got from it because this this chick uh it was a cc are you guys familiar with that brand all the chicks like them it's a cc beanie anyways yeah. it was my wife's and my wife she was like, here, I don't want this anymore. And I sold it. And this chick was like, oh, my gosh, I used to have this one. And my dog tore it up. And I could I've been looking for this same one for years. It was such cool feedback. Like I was she made me feel good for selling it to her. Yeah. Shane, I don't know how we're going to deal with you when you actually do get fans. I mean, this square is not that big to fit your big head. Yeah. Just for future reference, anytime you ask if we're familiar with something that the chicks like, well, my answer is no. <laughs> just... Here's what we here's what we can do, Alex. When when Shane gets that way, we can just do this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it barely fits now. It barely fits now. Yeah. Well, you know, his are all made up in his head. <laughs> pull that camera back a little bit more there, but anyway, in speaking his head, of he, in his head, he's charting the hip hop charts and everything. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of. Speaking of fans, guys, we need to pay homage. We want to say yeah. thank you to our locker room members, Mike Camparelli, MVP level, which yep. Mike and I have gotten together, and I'm going to be picking him up from the airport, and he's, of course, bunking with us at the locker room Airbnb. We got Keith of Vintage Sports Flips as an MVP, Chris, Easy Pickens, MVP, and Chad, Wolfman Goodies on the tip level. Thank you guys for being members of the locker room. There's plenty of room up here, everybody, if you want to join in, become a member of this channel. That's yeah, right. I think we have three million spots available. The yes. Ex, the extra room couple at the seats house, empty. The extra room at the house is full, but we still have about five tent spots on the lawn. Outside. Yes. If you guys want to drop us ten bucks, you can pitch a yep. tent in the back. Pitch a tent in the yard at the Airbnb at the one twenty seven. 
Now, Alex, do you want to cover the three levels of membership real quick? Probably not. I mean, it's been a while since I did it. I think I forgot. <laughs> so if I mess up. So the first one is called Just the Tip. I believe it is $2.99. Am I correct? Yes. $2.99 for Just the Tip. It's just a chip jar. To, you look like a young Santa Claus. <laughs> I can't wait till it turns white and then I can actually get paid to be Santa Claus. Hold on. And, I then, I, and then I could just eat as much as I want and get fat. Yeah. There you go. Anyways, next. Okay, uh, sorry. The next one is the most valuable player, which is four ninety nine. No. Yes. Four ninety nine. And I don't know so. what that gives you. Apparently, we're supposed to do behind the scenes, which we keep failing. So we sincerely apologize, guys, that we haven't put that out yet. But also, you can get the episode hopefully a day before, maybe two days before it drops, as long as a uh, Rocky Top gets that out. And then yeah. the next one is nine ninety nine, which gives you a spot here in the locker room to come join our lives. Also, if you head out to a meetup, we'll go out to dinner with just you and Archie's paying for that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Still paying for Still. it. Still. Yes. On biscuit butt. He's paying an all dollar bill. Good job, you, Alex. I totally butchered that. You hear that? I feel important. Yeah, but we hear it. <laughs> Audience applause. Great, great. Did good, bud. Encore. I had to get that. I had to get that audience applause because when we do lives and somebody gives us a super chat, last time I just played some music. So this time I got applause for anybody that does that. So I'm unfamiliar with that. I, I don't think I oh we did get a super chat. We did our first live the other day. Did kind you? of almost accidentally. Yep. Speaking of your lives, I just want to back you up when you said Grams is mean. I've never once seen you flip Grams off, but I've seen her <laughs> flip you off a lot. It's because I like my fingers. <laughs> so I'm back, I'm backing you up here, Chloe. I got your back. You know, Grams it's really bad to talk about her when she ain't here to defend herself. <laughs> I don't know where you still she, she, she don't know where I live yet. I got you. She can she can get a little squirrely. We keep her in line. And I keep my fingers down because I like to keep them. She makes me laugh, man. Just y'all's <laughs> banter back and forth is awesome. She makes me laugh too. That's why I keep you guys her around. Remind me of my my wife and I. We're we're a lot alike in the way we speak to each other and just goof off and have fun. Now off we're, camera, she's a different she's a different person. Off camera, she's a way meaner person. Get those floors done, Corey. That, we do that, a lot of editing. That, that no, book she's fine. Is was uh, written about Ben. I see that. What's the that? There. The, ben, the book right behind Corey is written about you, Ben. Oh, yeah. Which one? The red one. The red one. Go big real quick. <laughs> Let's look at these books. Hold on a minute. Let's do this. I don't know what you're you old see. Old AF. <laughs> what is AF? As F. we can't say that here. Oh, okay. You can't say that. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly marketing books up there. There's not a lot to look at. You're old as fudge. Old as fudge. Is that a wooden moonshine bottle jug back there behind you? No, that's a that's cool. Here. Freddy Freddie okay. Cougar. That's Freddie Cougar on there, right? Oh, Freddie, nice. That, oh, that's, that's a, a cutting that's board. Cutting board. That's cool. Yep. Yeah, I saw that. That's cool. Who would that's want from... a cutting board with Freddie Krueger on it though? That's from the Nerdy Picker, Liz. She makes those and sells them on her Etsy shop. Well, let oh, me cool. see that. Let me. Did she hand draw that? Let me see that again. I don't know how she put it on there. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, oh, that's wow. cool. She's got all kinds of different characters. I just had to get something for Freddy because I had Chucky well, up wait there. Wait a minute. Already. He's on a cutting board because his hands is made of blades. I get it. <laughs> yeah. The PG version would be Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, yeah. There you yeah. go. <laughs> how long? How long did it take you to put that together, Ben? Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's been a long day, guys. <laughs> okay. Find of the week, gentlemen, Corey. We'd love for you to participate in these following segments coming forth in this program, and we want to first talk about the find of the week. Who wants to go first? Ooh. I got one sitting here. If you want to make it big, real quick. Because it's a big item. This is a, okay. a dump. This is a dumpster dive find right here. It does work. Nice. Newcastle gear nice. sign lights up. 
pulled out of the dumpster, three ninety nine. Just I just had one little, of those. Little scratch on it, but three ninety nine. Scratch. That looks free. like the Grand Canyon. Three ninety nine. Oh, Turn it around. Flip it. Tree, Flip it around. Tree pity. It's from Diamond Billiards. Oh yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yep, that's the the find of the week there. Can't be free. All right. When you, run, when you run out of money, you know, you still got a source, guys. So that's the tip of the week. When you run out of money, check the dumpsters. I got a tip of the week, too, when, when we're done with this. Uh, what'd you find, Shano? <laughs> uh, well, I didn't really do any sourcing this week, but I did buy from Grams and Pops store on eBay. And this find of the week is going to be not for reselling purposes, but for YouTube content. I bought a sealed box of jumbo packs of 1988 tops football cards and i'm going to make content on the hunt for bo jackson rookie cards so it was i forget how much 220 bucks or so um for that box but hopefully i get some rookie cards out of it and get them graded and uh if nothing else the content should be kind of cool so I hope That's you find cool, some man. some bubble gum from the eighties. No, no, <laughs> not in those. What'd be cool, man, is you find a Bo Jackson football rookie and his baseball rookie card, put them together, and sell them as a lot. Glue them, glue you, them together. I should send well, you a list. I think there's like four cards in that in that series that are worth having graded. That actually sell decent if you have them graded. I think we sold a couple of them for eighty ninety bucks. That were graded and they they weren't tens, yeah, and they weren't yeah, Bo Jackson. So there are other cards in there. Yeah, Corey, I'll, you got to find. It. Yeah, I we're getting ready to put a content out about this. Not not tomorrow, but our Sunday video is actually about this find. We picked up a large collection of the Masterpiece series Transformers, all with they're open, they're they're yeah. used, but they all have the boxes. They're all complete, so. That was that was an eleven hundred dollar transformer buy. That would be our find of the week. Wow! Yeah, I'm excited to see that video. I saw your post in the Discord. Yeah, um, uh, there's not a lot. It, it was thirty nine transformers for eleven hundred bucks. It was a big buy. Well, here's mine wasn't mine was a find, but it was actually out of my own stuff that I pulled out of my mini storage. And I think, guys, I may have showed you these. When we did the yep. live, I believe. Yep, bam, bam. But, you know, I had a tall storage tub, not one of those low profile ones, but a real tall one full of these that I bought back in the late 90s. I think this is a 98. And I had a bunch of these listed some single. If I if the value, the solds were enough, I listed them singles. But then I lotted up a bunch of NWO members. Um if you were if they were tag team wrestlers and they had their individual cars, I put both tag team members together, so they got them listed in lots. And I have to give a shout out and thank you to Caleb on the old pass because we were talking about that on the live and he went in and he bought a yep. lot of ten of them for me. And I think they were twenty five ninety nine plus shipping on that. So that was a pretty good sale. So let me tell you something. You YouTubers out there should be jockeying to get people to buy from your store instead of subbing and liking your video because you can make money quicker off of <laughs> your sales. <laughs> well, here's a trick. Put your card with a code in it in all your packages that you ship out and your customers on eBay could become your fans on YouTube. Yeah, I do that. We get a lot of viewer subscriptions from our sales on eBay. Yeah, but then, I then do that. They'll see that I paid a dollar for this book and I sold it for four hundred dollars. They're going to be, probably be mad at me. Well, no, they don't. They're mind. not mad. They don't. Yeah, if, yeah, I don't know. They're going to be I've like. Had, what? I've had feedback that say, you know, something about you know item just to describe fast shipping, blah blah blah, and then at the end it says subscribed. <laughs> you know, yep. with an exclamation point. They right. they really don't seem to mind. They know most people selling on there are resellers. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, let's move into sale of the week, guys. Who wants to go first? I can start this one as well if you guys want. I sure. sold the Weezer uh, 
Pinkerton CD signed by the band, professionally framed and mounted. Here's the listing right here. I had it listed for $500. I sent out an offer on the watchers for $399.99, and it sold today. That's $399.99, right? Correct. And then I made another $20 off the shipping. Off of the Heck yeah. Shipping that would be crazy. That's a glass. That's glass in the frame too, yeah, right? Yeah, it's all glass. So it was, you know, bubbled wrap and then cardboard around it and then inside another cardboard box. So it's two cardboard box with paper around the, the <laughs> first cardboard box. We have a bunch of art and canvas prints and stuff from a storage unit that's decent yeah. art. I mean, two, $300 paintings and stuff, but I'm... We've been holding off because I don't want to ship it. Yeah, I have we got to get it listed sometime. I have a ton of artwork too, but I had this one was the best because I got this thing free in two, uh, 1996. I got it free from a radio station. I won it. So wow. it's the best flip I've done, you know? Well, now I really feel like I don't know how to resell because both things you've mentioned so far have been free. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm doing this right at all. Well, let me give you let me give you a strategy, Corey. I'll give you a strategy. Me and, and Alex and Shane were discussing this before you joined us. <laughs> Alex, do you want to tell everybody out there in YouTube land what your philosophy of reselling has come down to now? I make most of my money off of shipping than I do the actual items. <laughs> <laughs> That is the tip of the week right there, ladies and gentlemen. Let me put that up on the screen. Price your stuff out to where you make more money on the shipping than you do your item and call it a day. Now that I live in Alaska, the calculated shipping to get your item, it's going to be a lot, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, I didn't have any real big bangers, but I've been selling a ton of jeans lately. Uh, I sold three pairs of jeans today numerous uh throughout the week but they're all selling for like these are like ariat and different brands like that that are kind of popular um all most of them came from that diy denim box that i bought from thread up but oh, yeah. some came from the bins yeah um i i was surprised a lot of it didn't sell during the winter time but they're starting to sell now so whatever but um anywhere from 20 to 35 dollars a pair and I'm selling them left and right all of a sudden. So I don't know what's going on, but I'm not going to complain. Yeah, I thought your wife told you that you finally had to sell off your sparkle butt jeans because she was ashamed that you wore them. So you're selling <laughs> off your collection of bedazzled butt jeans. Well, th those haven't sold yet. Because you list them too high because you really don't want to sell them. Yeah, I know how that is. is. All she Start needs. My wife, tells me stuff, my wife tells me to list things. And I just list it really, really high. So it never you sells. Dazzled. Yeah, yeah sell those on your OnlyFans page, Shane. Yeah, <laughs> they probably would lightly sell used better over there. Y'all take yeah. all them plain jeans and order one of those bedazzlers, Shane, and just start putting glitter yeah. on all the butts of those jeans that are. <laughs> yeah, know, but I'll put like skulls and stuff. It'll be cool. Let's bedazzle them. Skulls and know? flames and fabulous cool things. <laughs> yeah. Mine all right. Right. I think mine this week would have been that. The storage unit we got all those art prints from, we talked about in about a dozen videos already. We also got a lot of high-end clothes out of, and we sold another jacket from that, a men's North Face extreme shell jacket. It's like all black with gray shoulders, and yeah. we sold that for two ninety this week. Heck yeah. Wow, that's really nice. Man. You guys had some good sales. How about you, Ben? Well, you, go. you know, I got to yeah, re-echo. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to re-echo again, you know, for those that didn't catch our live, um, local Goodwill is a mile that way from my house in there one day, you know, doing my picking, saw an Atlanta Braves hat sitting on top of the hat bin, turned out to be an early 1990s, got it home, comped it out, found a comp. It sold early, early last year for $495. I priced wow. it under that, but I sat on it for six months with no, I mean, a lot of watchers, but no, nobody taking offers or making offers. Did get an offer just the other day for a hundred dollars and I took it because I only have 99 cents in it. Yeah. yeah. Now I, I have a sports ball, but 
is that were they doing better at the time it sold for that much compared to what they're doing now like why well i wonder why the big swing out of you know terra peak now goes to three years yep, in yep. back research so when i ran that it only had one sold of that exact same hat and it sold for 495 so i think i i priced mine at like 350 something like that so when I offer of a hundred came through and I like what reseller in their right mind with a 99 cent investment would not let that go for a hundred bucks. So I just went, Alex, it's done. Alex, wouldn't. Alex wouldn't, I know <laughs> I, I have a hat that I listed for two fifty, and I got an offer for one Oh nine and I, I declined it. And now I can't sell the hat at all. I keep getting offers for $65. I at least want the $109 instant regret. I'm, but, but I want to I want to go back to something that that Corey you had mentioned earlier that we all agree to is that we all really do suck at this reselling business when you we when do. you look at other people. But first, let's be fair <laughs> to our audience. Number one, one of the biggest mistakes I believe you can make as a reseller, other than not buying low and selling high, is you shouldn't and you don't need to compare yourself and your business with somebody else and their business because of the variations are so large and how everybody does their own business. It's not fair to you to, you know, try to compare your performance to somebody else because other people's work ethic may be different from yours and vice versa. But I say that to say this, this is not rocket science. What we're doing, gentlemen, Anybody can walk into a Goodwill, find an item for 99 cents and flip it for hundreds of bucks if you find the right item. I mean, it, it's not that difficult. It just requires a lot of self-dedication and, and educating yourself on getting yourself educated on what to look for. And I never thought when I picked that Braves hat up that it was going to comp that high. I really didn't. I knew it was an early 90s, so I knew it was vintage. Mm -hmm. but you know you learn from experience but um if if you can make good money at the level you're at you're ahead of a lot of people because how many pe i mean i've seen i've known friends of mine that started ebay and they've quit because they get frustrated they get tired of dealing with it going through the processes you know so uh, even, I mean, my local friends, I, I, there was a group of them I had here and, and, you know, everybody's different. I, I tell Teresa all the time, I swear resellers share a brain, like half the stuff we're talking about right now, we just did a video on, it comes out tomorrow. Like, I agree with you a hundred percent. Don't ever compare yourself to somebody else, at yeah. least without context. If you're comparing yourself to somebody else, do it for a reason. Like, yeah. do you have something you're trying to learn from that person? Are they doing something different than you that you can adapt? Don't do it apples to apples in terms of they make a hundred thousand a year and I make 50. That's silly. Yeah. But with, with this stuff too, I think a lot of the reason most resellers get into this and they quit because they can't do it full time is because they have no idea what full time means to them when they start. They don't, they don't know what they're trying to build. So they never get there. Like literally they're building a house without a blueprint. And we started in reverse. We we know what we need to make to do this and nothing else. And yeah. that's where we started. And then we tried to figure out how to get there. And that's a whole different way to go into it than I see a lot of people going into it every day. And then they get disappointed. Yeah. Now I'm going to have to make a video about it. If everybody <laughs> else is, you, I'm riding everybody's coattails. <laughs> Well, let's, every time let's... I make a video, I see somebody drop one the day before on the same topic. I, I swear promise. it happens I all the time. I won't make one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going so to do the Soda, Soda City soapbox. And just let's talk new about video scenarios where I just, you know, you talk about? aggravate people. Let's talk about let's talk about <laughs> YouTube. Know. Let's talk about YouTube for just a second, guys, because, you know, okay. with our okay. our YouTube channels and our reselling go hand in hand. Right. My uh, well, well, my two tips of the week both evolve, revolve around YouTube. So, okay. real quick, uh, first tip of the week: if you are a content creator, shout out Trash to Cash every now and then, and then when you go live, Dave and Carrie will both come in your show and donate fifty dollar super chats. 
Um, so tip of the week number one. Uh, tip of week number two. Put out videos that scare people when you're doing stuff. I sold a couple of hats and I made some videos and in the videos I was taping boxes shut and I had lots of comments telling me that I was scaring people and they were anxious watching me tape my boxes up. What? I go to my PO box today and this was in the mail. A tape dispenser? Hey, Somebody like sent me a, a tape dispenser. I have no idea who it came from because it came from the manufacturer or the, the website that they bought it from. How are you taping the boxes in this video? Somebody just, drop shipped you a tape dispenser. Yes. I just <laughs> with the regular tape gun. I put it on the box and pull it around. But my my hand, I was trying to hold the box closed because it kept wanting uh -huh. to open. So I, you know, pull it, stop, move my hand and then go. But everybody was like, dude, you're scaring me. You're making me anxious. <laughs> and then today, three inch wide tape dispenser in the mail. I just... So, so my next tip. what's old video, I'm going to pack my things while I'm driving my car on the way to the post office and just be taping them and driving. Use yeah, a yeah. razor without the utility knife, just the blade. Um, somebody <laughs> else send you like a, a minivan so you have more room and less dangerous. That's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know who, who sent this to me, but thank you guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this every single day. I really appreciate it. You're going to love it. I love ours. That's awesome. Interesting. So, yeah. Those are my two tips. Trash to cash shout outs get you hundred dollars every time you go live. That's the big one. Gotcha. All right, guys. I'm going live Friday. I mean, any any tips? Are you really? Hell no. no. <laughs> maybe no, we went no, maybe. Maybe. We went live, Shane. I think you were you were on the live, weren't you? When we went live out in the shop. No, you I, watched, that one? I watched it, but I was at work when y'all went live. Now, I was laughing because the phone was all like... Oh, oh it was bad. It was phone. so bad. The <laughs> phone was vertical. The phone went flying. I dropped the phone <laughs> once. I was laughing. No, we, we had a video go out that was just starting to take off. Like, our last video was starting to take off. It was getting a lot of views. And we were yeah. out there doing some stuff. We decided to answer a question. So, I hit go live, which is we've never done before immediately our last video shut off i think oh. it's gotten 10 views since that live came out like wow. it just shut our video down that's crazy wow. so i have a i put out a video today now do you think if i put out a short tomorrow it's gonna take traffic away from that full length video i did if i do a short I don't know. i've heard that it doesn't but i i don't know i've never tested that theory out but like j-ride flips sometimes he he'll put me. three short three three shorts I think I asked him that, same, and he told me the he told same me no, day. But, yeah, yeah, he'll post a video. I know their live didn't help us. Yeah, that's that's crazy though, because I've I've done it. I've put out videos and then gone live in the same day, and I've which I don't get the views that you get either. So maybe I just don't notice it. We don't get that many views, but we get we get a lot less when we follow up a video drop with a live. <laughs> Apparently, it just shut it down. I was surprised because it was it was getting like sixty views an hour, which is not. I mean, that's not a ton of views, but that's good for us, good. It, yeah. you know, af the day after a drop. So it was still doing stronger than normally did on day two. But as soon as we put out that drive, it, that live video, it dropped to zero. And we've gotten like 10 views since then in almost 24 hours. So I was, wow. Ben's wanting me to go live and I was contemplating doing a video Tuesday and then do a live, maybe possibly Thursday and go live. But now I got to worry about what you're talking about. But I don't get views anyway, so it's not really going to affect me at all. <laughs> or maybe our live just sucked. I mean, that could have something to do with it. <laughs> I was laughing. Like I said, the the, the first few minutes especially were... It wasn't weird. good. <laughs> yeah, we actually did drop... I actually did drop the phone trying to figure out the tripod. I probably should have done that before hit and go live. <laughs> <laughs> it was well, good. I, I enjoyed it. Speaking of YouTube... Our lovable bearded friend down there in the corner. We need to get him to a thousand subs, ladies and gentlemen. If you've not subscribed to Alex Beard King Picker channel, you're in luck because there's a new video up for you to partake in. So yep. go over to the Beard King Picker channel, hit the sub button, hit the thumbs up. That'll help our buddy out. We want I him to, to reach a pentacle uh, milestone. 
Yeah. That is the, that is the goal, guys, to hit a thousand before the one twenty seven. So I'm on the road to one twenty seven and one thousand. You gonna yeah, do at right. least one video a week and tell them? I put out a video this week. I'm good for the month, right? <laughs> I don't good. think that's how math works, but okay. How does math work? I put out a video, I lose like four subscribers every time. <laughs> that's exactly how YouTube math works. Yeah. Yep. So... And then every hundredth video, you get. A thousand subscribers. You just yeah. got to get one good one. I haven't yeah. had a good one in the last couple four, but yeah, I've done like it's been a while video, for us. One video every two weeks. I think there was a month break there. So yes, I, I do plan on giving you guys every one single video. day for a month. We what do. Happened? We did come back with about fifty subscribers from every event we've ever been to. Well, like cool. after coming back home, it seems like wow, we always get cool. a jump. Well, yeah, I think I got like four from orlando well there's one of them only six people there so you got most of them well yeah and yeah. carrie's been to subscribe to me for a while <laughs> uh kevin i'm not sure about but adh dave subscribed to me while i was down there and uh I'm he hadn't fan. subscribed to you before that no he just they they would uh you know the back and forth banter between me and them has always been fun but i guess until we physically met you know, maybe he just had to qualify. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Dave, but, you should subscribe to me. I'm subscribed to all 20 channels that you have. Yeah. I am too, you actually. The cooking one. channel. Uh no, I'm not subscribed to the roller coaster channel because I'm just not a theme park guy, so it's not my thing, but I do like to eat. So I watch I would it. love it if they subscribe to me, but only if they're gonna watch. If you're not gonna watch, I don't want you to subscribe because it's hard enough to get our views out. <laughs> I don't care if they watch if they keep uh super chatting, I'm cool. It's, yeah there is that but we don't do lives so and not i don't know true. if we'll do another one we probably will we'll try it you again should. with the phone not on the floor yeah <laughs> that'll probably floor. be helpful <laughs> that'll help well you know talking about my life about, like that about youtube man and i think we all struggle with this from time to time as creators is coming up with new content ideas because we're working off of two two factors i think Number one, reselling is such a small niche on YouTube alone. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got that going against you. You're, we got that going against us, really, when you're thinking of YouTube as overall. And then two, everything has been covered in for, some form or fashion having to do with reselling on YouTube. So to Several me, a dozen those, times. <laughs> yeah, those are two <laughs> struggles or the confines of which we are trying to manipulate. And I don't know how you guys feel about that, but those really are, are two crushers. The fact that we're such a small niche on YouTube and the fact that there's been so much reselling content done, how can you come up with anything fresh and new? And the only thing I ever keep coming back to is you can talk about the same things that's already been talked, but it comes from a different point of view. Different yep. point of view, but people are subscribing based on your personality, though. Personality, too. yeah. And how yeah, yeah nobody watches our channel to learn about reselling. I could tell you that right now. Like they yeah. they tune in to watch Teresa abuse me and and <laughs> me make fun of her, and that's that's why people watch our stuff. It isn't to learn anything, <laughs> right? I got that's you. funny though. All yeah, right. and it's hard, like you said, being um coming up with new stuff it, it's almost like when when there's a new hot topic you got to be the first to jump on it yeah or else you're just you know following suit with everybody else you know every time like the ebay seller update comes out or something you know like there's five or six channels that jump on that immediately yeah probably more that i'm not subscribed to maybe but you know so then you're like ah, i don't really want to make a video on the reseller update you know it's been done 14 times already i don't i don't well, want to make that type of content anyway so yeah I, that's true i think we can attribute that shane to the times that we live in you know back in the day information traveled a lot slower yeah you know? for sure and now news is <clears throat> instant what's making news right now it's old news in five minutes because of yeah. social media and all the different platforms that you can get information from so yeah it's just like i i struggle with this thought every so do day do you have do you get up on recording day and and then 
sit there on the couch with a notepad and try and think about what you're going to be like, like what's your process for when you go to make a video? Are you on a schedule? And if you get to that scheduled day where you need to record, how, how do you make that decision? I know how we do it, but. Well, are you I asking start, me? I, I start yeah. with 12 cups of coffee. So I can try to be <laughs> just, get, just get a good buzz going. Yeah, pretty much. Just don't yeah. eat all morning and just drink straight caffeine. And yep. then you throw the phone on the ground and hit record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try one. that. So, uh, ben, do you, are you on a, are you on a pretty tight schedule as far as like, do you, do you schedule your content out and stay consistent with it weekly? It seems like you did for a long time. Last year. I think he still does. Yeah. Yeah. Last year. I consistently done a video every week. I drop it at the same day at the same time. So you know that pressure when it's time to put out that video, you got to go record. Yeah. So how how are you coming up with topics? That's a bad position to put yourself in too, by the way. So what I've, and I'm glad you asked me this because what I've now started doing is I'm, I'm like three videos ahead now. Oh, I wish that I've got already edited and they're already scheduled to drop three weeks into the future already so any any footage i record this week just adds to my draft bank and i will schedule it to go out just like i do when i do my listings well just so i can save myself some time are any of them good i'll write that one down (laughs) i'm just following through the motions man you know now we we always land in that position because we're mondays we schedule, we record all of our videos on Monday because we drop a Wednesday and a Sunday video. But our big packing day is always Monday because yeah. we pack every day. But then the weekend we let sit until Monday. Yeah. So we do all of our videos Monday. That means we have to have two video ideas every Monday morning. And we wake up every Monday without one and have to start coming up with that idea. And The only thing that I jot down, I mean like a notepad, is is I'll just jot down title ideas and then I try to build content around what the title is going to be. Like I'll get a title in my head, write it down, think about it. What can I build around what this title says? We kind of do the same thing too. I think, I know we stole it from somewhere. Like we're not that smart, but I, when we started getting it to where it was a little easier on us and we didn't have to beat ourselves up until like two o'clock before we started recording, we started asking two questions every Monday morning. Is there something that people that resell are afraid of? Rather, they're new resellers or old resellers. Or is, is there anything that makes them worry? Like, are, are you going to get returns? That's a worry. That's something they're afraid of. Or is there anything that they want? Is there a desire? So a, a, a fear or a desire, we try and think of one of those, and we build a title around it, and then we fill in the rest. Yeah. And that's kind of how we've been doing it. And it seems easier to come mm-hmm. up with something because I can always think of something that worries me with eBay or reselling. And I can always think of something I would want out of eBay or reselling. I did and then solve we just that fill problem, in the blank. So did you read my comment? I solved the problem for getting not, you know, the fear of getting returns. Just don't list or sell anything on eBay. I did. I did. Read that. <laughs> and that is, prob- I said, that's next level stuff. We're not Corey, there. What, it, what is your return policy, Corey? 30 days free returns. The only thing we don't do that on is close. Have you found anybody getting mm-hmm. abusive to that free return stuff? No. Because there's, think... there's a lot of resellers that I've talked to that don't want to do free returns in fear that people will abuse that. And you end up getting on ads. Well, like here's, crazy. he's covering. I think here's a good the, test for, for that. If you shut your free returns off, just do buyer pays returns, shut them off for 90 days and see what kind of returns you get back. See how many returns you get back and why. If, if most of the returns that come back are actually returns that were your fault to begin with, they're not just frivolous then turn on free returns because it ain't gonna matter. Cause if you want to reduce your returns, you just got to do better yourself. Like the, the ones coming back, you're going to pay for anyway, if they were your fault, even if you didn't offer free returns and mm-hmm. that's kind of how we did it. And then we just got to the point where we are like, okay, we got four returns this 90 days and three of them were something we messed up. 
There's no reason not to have free returns on. We had to pay free returns on all three of those anyway. True. And you get the 10% off your... It, that number's confusing a lot of times. It's, t- it's not an extra 10% off... Like, you make an extra 10%. It's 10% off your final value fees that you're saving. Yeah. So I think yeah. it comes out to like 1% you save overall. But that's that adds up. That's a lot of money at the end of yeah. the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. If you're selling volume, that'll add up yep. really quick. All right. Pitiful sale of the week, guys. What we got? Well, I guess I can go first. I, I sold them. Well, you only get one. The worst. I sold a 1965 hardback complete collection of uh, William Shakespeare. And it sold today, actually, for $12. And I was like, cool. I probably paid, you know, a dollar for this book. I'll take 12 for it. I didn't realize that somehow this was the only book in my store that was listed as free shipping. It is a two-pound book. Shipping cost me five bucks, uh, minus shipping supplies, eBay fees, and all the ca- cost of goods and all that crap. I might have made two dollars. Yeah, Pro tip: Pro- If the book weighs two pounds, it actually weighs four pounds. Yes, and you charge shipping, and then you make a little bit. The then you no, you don't make a little bit. You make a lot of money on shipping. You make all your Alex. money on the shipping. Yes, let's get every that book, right. Alex. Every book, even if it's a paper, if I sell one paper, it weighs three pounds. All right, I'm. I may have done worse than that, Shane. We actually sold. Well, we. I'm going to blame this one on Teresa because she's the one that does this stuff. She sold a little white monster high belt. Um, it was only about as big as your your thumbnail. And sold it for three bucks plus shipping. I think we charged like four bucks shipping. So I'm pretty certain we probably lost money on that one. <laughs> yeah, buddy, man. This is some hot stuff. All right, Alex. And then there was silence. I'm looking for one here, guys. I mean, my sales are just so amazing. It's hard to find. All right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I got a Dire, dire Straits cassette tape. Three ninety nine plus shipping. That's my pathetic sale or pitiful Dang, sale. Money for nothing. Money for nothing, and the shipping is not free. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wait. Di- this thing, Dymo tape for six dollars plus shipping. I probably paid like a dollar at a yard sale for this, so I didn't really make that much off this thing. But I- yeah. Man, we're just killing it, guys. Yeah, net positive on that one, though. That's that's a good sale in my book. Yeah, this is the lowest price one I had. All right, we got a comment of the week. Shane, did you find one? I did actually. Um, I have two. Um, one right. that I one that I did not see. Um, but this is from episode twenty three. This is where our beloved Archie. This was our first episode without Archie. Um. And our buddy Anthony Dragon Masters Fine says, Good luck, Archie. Now there's no reason to watch these clowns anymore. <laughs> and then uh our our other buddy John Rad Relics, his comment just says, Alex is going to be pregnant now. So I don't know what that's about, but <laughs> okay. Those are the two comments I, don't even ask. I, I didn't know what that was, and then I watched the episode again. Ben said Somehow we're gonna birth alive out of Alex. <laughs> I did say that, didn't he said I? Said that, and that's where the pregnancy <laughs> comment came from. Okay. Uh, so okay, in nine months, I'm gonna be giving birth, and I will do my first live on YouTube. <laughs> I might have to do it with my legs up, and we'll go live. Do it in stirrups. <laughs> <laughs> that that comment did throw me off until I watched it back. I'm like, what is he talking about? That's crazy. Oh, man. Well, I've already done this once, but I feel like we should do it again. Down below in the text box, again, thank you to everybody that's members of the locker room. We got Mike, Keith, and Chris as MVP members and Chad Wolfman Goodies at the tip level. Thank, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us and being supporters of this channel and this show. We certainly do appreciate your support. 
And Absolutely. if you'd like to be a member, you can check out the links down below uh, here on our channel and you can find a subscription that would suit your needs as well as your budget. All right. Where do we go from here? Uh, should we go off topic? Should we? Oh, I know what we're going to do. Hold on a minute. Where do we go from here? You guys all leave this video and go watch my new video. This is anyone's rant. opportunity to rant about anything you would like to complain about. I created this segment just for Ben because he always has something to rant about. It's just yeah, get the red sharpie I out. Stop ranting about something. Every day I call him, he's crying about something, ranting about something. So what what do you have to say today, Ben? Telling tales out Who of school. Has lit your crawl. <laughs> Telling tales out of school. <laughs> Ain't nobody lit my crawl. I'm good. I'm wanting Corey. Corey, you got anything you want to rant about? My rants are never any good, but I mean, there's got be beef, got got be beef with Pop Tarts. About... Wait, what? Oh, beef well, with let's, hear, let's hear yeah, this. I got some beef with Pop Tarts. Tell us about the Pop Tarts <laughs> and then all the things you hate about Ken. <laughs> about <laughs> Ken. I'm not going to do that, but I'll tell you about Pop Tarts. All right, let's the do flavors it. of Pop Tarts are getting out of hand. Like strawberry, cherry, blueberry, wild berry. Those are the classics, and those are the ones I like to find. Oh, and every time I go to find Pop Tarts now, it's some cinnamon crap or s'mores or brown sugar or some other goofy flavor. Like, where's all the berries? Bring back the berries. Bring back the berries. The snozberries. That's, that's my it's Pop Tart. Like snozberries. And we love Ken. We're right. not, I'm not going to do that to Ken. Yeah, no, Ken, I'm kidding. Ken, Ken, Ken <laughs> told me my my Monday Night Live was not his favorite one, so I'm a little butt hurt about it. Well, in 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 true fashion, I don't think our podcast is his favorite one either. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, well, if nobody's got anything to rent, I'm pretty content, guys. To be honest with you, I mean, sales yeah, could be me better, too. but who could not want sales to be better every day? You know, True sales could always be better, but uh, yep. they're getting there anyway. All right. Well, we are an hour and 17 minutes. Corey, you got anything else you'd like to share with our viewers? No, I appreciate you guys having me on. And uh, anybody that gets a chance to go to the 127 meetup, I would highly recommend it. Like I said, I can't, I can't recommend them enough. If it ain't that one, pick a different one and go to it. But I would, I would recommend the 127. If you can get to it, get to it. You ain't going to find a cheaper one ticket price. So, well, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's not true. I know of one other that's cheaper, but <laughs> I don't think it's going to be organized the way this one is. So, yeah, if a you get a chance, food. get there. It's just a foodie event by Ray's putting on here in Nashville, but it's free. You just got to pay for it. Yeah, it looks like eat, drink, sing, get bucked off, eat, and then go to church. <laughs> so it's sin, yeah. sin, sin, ask forgiveness, go home. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. What's the name of that restaurant? Uh, the Wild <laughs> Beaver. The Wild <laughs> Beaver. We're going to break bread in Nashville, Tennessee at the Wild Beaver. Go and check this is out why it ends with church. Yeah, go check out my new video. I I do the whole breakdown of the the Nashville meetup there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I so think that's love, it. Yeah, I really appreciate love. you guys having me on. Again, try, Man, try yeah. and get to one of these if you can. Well, we we want to we want to thank you, Corey, for your time. We want to tell our viewers if you've not already, go over and sub to Grams and Pops Vintage Channel. Go over and sub to the Clickbait Podcast. Him and Ken do a great job over there, and uh, you know, doing podcasts is a commitment. It's tough, and uh, it's a grind, just like YouTube and reselling is a grind. Everything we do is a grind, but we appreciate it. And fellas, y'all got any more you want to add, Shane, Alex? No, I'm good, man. I think we covered basically everything. Yep. We did it again without any ideas in our head, and we made it to a, almost an hour and a half. Yeah. It's actually surprising we're, me we're, every time we make it this far. We're super good at freestyling. Freestyle. Keep it up. Where's your, where's your freestyle, Shane? Drop the nope. beat. Let's hear it. Uh, yeah. Come on. Nothing. This he can't freestyle. Well, oh, he's going to start charging for that service. You know, he can go do Throw out some Taylor Swift. Free. Get you demonetized. Yeah. yeah. Ladies Swift and gentlemen, like my name is Ben, the Rocky Top Picker, followed by Soda City Flips, Beard King Picker, special guest Corey Grams and Pops Vintage. 
Thank you for joining us right here in the locker room, and we'll see you next time every Thursday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard.